And this is the uh, final video of the four videos looking at the effect of safety camera vehicles. So this just deals with miscellaneous things which I've come across when I've been looking at the uh, myths and truths as stated by North Yorkshire Police. So there were myth nine according to the police. Cameramans only catch speeders. They don't catch, or they don't tackle other motoring offences, and then they say that this is simply incorrect. Well, looking at the statistics, in 2018 the total number of violations was 110,000, and speeding violations accounted for 106,000, which is 96.5%. Only 3.5% were violations for all offences other than speeding. And if you work that out, it's less than one violation per day, per van. <laughs> so obviously, speeding is the, uh, is the main reason why they're there. Either that or the North Yorkshire travelling public are decidedly law-abiding when it comes to using mobile phones and crossing double white lines and not wearing their seatbelts and so on. And the final myth of all, which I'm going to look at, is this one, by using cameras stealthily. And then there's the, the truth there, as uh, according to the police, that they are highly visible. And they assess all camera van locations to ensure there's a clear eye line with no obstruction as well. My experience, for what it's worth, is that uh, they tend to hide behind the brow of a hill. <laughs> so when you come over the hill, bang, they've got you. I mean, it's not an excuse for breaking the uh, speed limit, but if you're just marginally over due to a slight lack of concentration on a, on a, a 60 road or a 50 road, I'm not necessarily talking about in villages where speed is of greater concern, perhaps, then uh, it's too late. And the other thing is that the, uh, these new cameras uh, have an incredibly powerful telescopic lens and uh, I've read recently that they can target a, a car or vehicle more than a mile away. And uh, these next two uh, slides uh, show that. In other words, they've got you long before you see them no matter how, how many high-vis markings they've got on. But again, it doesn't excuse you from breaking the speed limit, but um, a minor lapse in concentration is, uh, is something which I think everybody does, including the police. This next series of uh, photographs exemplifies everything that people are concerned about. The first photograph is of the, uh, the 30 mile an hour sign itself. It's on the brow of a hill, just as you're coming into a village. You want the houses and the lamp post on the left hand side, about 30 yards beyond the 30 miles an hour sign. Because if you're still doing 35 miles an hour, when you pass that lamp post, it's too late. They've got you. Two other concerns. One, 
the motorcycle itself, with all its high vis stick ons, is obscured by the bus shelter on the right hand side. You can't see it. And the camera is placed well off the road so that the camera and the operator are just poking out from the side of the bus shelter. And very successful uh, is this camera in clocking speeders and raising revenue. But when you look at the Craig Hall figures over the years, it's done very little to reduce the incidence of speeding in the village. A far better system would be to use these vehicle activated signs, VAS. Uh, a number of police forces use them, seen them at Collingham in the West Riding, uh, Cleveland police use them and they're very successful. But they're not very, they're not very good at raising revenue. Shipped in Benningborough. Well, this was quite worrying because this village has been cited twice in uh, North Yorkshire Police documents as a, an example of the positive effect that safety camera vehicles have on speeding. And uh, I'm going to show you two graphs, both from the same year. And uh, this is the, uh, the first one, this bar graph. So I'm assuming that these are the violations and uh, these are three months in uh, the first qu quarter of the year or slightly more for the first five months of the year. In March the figure was given there as about 47 in April 20 odd and in March, uh, sorry in May it was down at somewhere around about 12. Now this is the second graph which is for the whole of the year, January, June and December. And in January they say the figure was 7.71, whereas in that graph up here I said it was 47. Ditto April when it said it was 20 odd on the graph above. April would be about here. It's between 7 and 7.5 and, and May, ditto. So where those figures came from, I've no idea. The other thing to notice about this is the vertical scale. It doesn't begin at 0, it begins at 5. And the horizontal scale is sort of shortened. Both of these are sort of tricks statisticians use, <laughs> or people using statistics uh, to exaggerate an effect. So if you shorten that, this would be much steeper. So these figures don't match the figures on the graph above at all. And alongside the graph was this piece of information here. Uh, and this particular statement here seems very odd. Because if you look at the actual figures taken from the data log, it doesn't match either graph at all. So they are the figures from the data log for 2017 and these are the violations an hour 
And if you put them onto a bar graph, this is what you get. And there is nothing significant on that graph to indicate that safety camera vehicles have had any effect at all. In January it was 9.5. February and so on, it was just a, a zigzagging line. Nothing statistically significant about it whatsoever. Uh, on the second graph they indicate a big drop in December. The major drop is from August down to November. Into December it jumped back up again. So uh, they don't match. Which is quite worrying considering they're using their figures to uh, justify the claim that safety camera vehicles have in fact reduced the number of speeding motorists in Shipton in Billingborough. And they haven't. So, this little bit's just about a public consultation exercise, it's a, and the Police Commissioner made this statement in November 2015, in which he said that 72% of the people in this survey felt that more needed to be done to improve road safety through education. Well, education certainly has a big effect. Enforcement, well, as I say, we've, we've just looked at that. And the survey was carried out by the uh, commissioner and the chief constable. And about two and a half thousand members of the public, which is about four, four percent, and that didn't include your, so only 4% responded, and, and they weren't randomly selected, as you would expect with a, a survey of this kind. They were simply self-selecting. Um, so the fact that they were self-selecting, I mean, it just... The, the validity, of, validity of, the, uh, of the survey is, uh, is shot to pieces. Uh, and it wasn't 72%, only 51% of that 4.1%. In other words, only 2.1 percent percentages, percentages. Only 2.1 percent of the population thought that the uh, North Yorkshire Police should have more capability, including safety camera vehicles. So uh, make of that what you will. I mean, there is a place for safety camera vehicles. I'm not suggesting that. You know, these things should be done away with. I mean, there's a, there's a sort of idiot motorcycle in the 1960s, you know, lucky to survive, not being killed or seriously injured. And if we'd had safety camera vehicles around then, then I'm sure a sizable number of young lives would have been saved. And I, I in no way wish to undermine the excellent work that the agencies the police, the fire brigade, and the air ambulance and paramedics do when they have to deal with these KSI accidents. It must be absolutely awful. And uh, we have to be thankful that there are people prepared to do this. And there's a couple of interesting quotes there just to finish off. Well, we've looked at it. Well, we've looked at all four videos now, and uh, where have we ended up? <laughs> well, the evidence would suggest that the safety camera vans or speed camera vehicles, whatever you want to call them, haven't reduced the incidence of people who are killed and seriously injured in North Yorkshire. Evidence would suggest they've had no effect whatsoever. Are they a, a sort of cash cow? You know, are they simply there to raise revenue? 
Well, all the evidence would suggest that that is true. The, um, by targeting the A1M, the safest road in North Yorkshire, which has raised what almost a quarter of the revenue. Um, is a strong, well, it's not a powerful indication that it is uh, they are simply there to raise money. Uh, how accurate are they? Well, there are too many anomalous results, which are very blatant, which would imply that there are a sizable number of anomalous results, or inaccurate results, let's put it that way for comfort and the effect on some people's lives might have just been, well, might be devastating so that is a worry do they catch motorists other than speeders, as it were? well they do but they catch less than one a day per van. <laughs> so the main motive is obviously to catch speeders. And they uh, they target motorists in a, a sort of sly way. Well, my evidence, such as it is, is that they do. Um, and no doubt there's more and more dash cam video is taken, more and more evidence will suggest that that is the case. Um, so there we are. Anyway, it's a dull overcast and a uh, slight drizzle. It's probably a good day for going fishing. Anyway, Tank lines. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>